What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and let's talk hypotheticals for a second. Let's just say you got your brand new fandangled graphics card, AMD or Nvidia, doesn't really matter. Uh, this one's not new, but you kind of get the idea, right? It's visual aid. And you've been pretty content with it, and you decide you want more performance, but there's a, there's a catch. You're not willing to overvolt or overclock because that's just scary. And even though I've shown you it's easy and it's very safe and almost nothing can go wrong, you're still not willing to change any of the core clock speeds on this thing. But you want more performance. Can it be done? Yes, it can. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. How to get more performance out of your graphics card without actually having to overclock. Today's video is brought to you by MassDrop, and right now they have a drop going on the Minivan Custom Mechanical Keyboard Kit, featuring customizable key layouts, tons of keycap choices, extremely sturdy metal construction, and all at only 40% of the size of a standard keyboard. Over 500 units have already sold, so don't wait if you want to take advantage of this exclusive MassDrop pricing. Now what I'm going to show you today actually applies to both AMD and NVIDIA. Well, about 80% of it is going to apply to AMD. I'll explain why I say 80% in a second. But I don't want any of the beginners or the newbies here to get left behind. So if this sounds a bit redundant, I apologize, but you've got to understand some basics before you can actually understand what it is we're doing so you know how it works. If you know how it works, then you can actually play around and get some better results. Now, NVIDIA uses what's called GPU Boost to allow the graphics card to self-overclock as far as it can that was considered reasonable and safe. So the nice thing is you are usually going to get higher than advertised speeds within video graphics cards. That's just the way GPU boost works. Now AMD also has a boost clock, but it doesn't have a perimeter in there that allows it to go farther than what the predetermined boost clock is. So whereas an NVIDIA graphics card may say it has a 1760 megahertz boost clock, you might actually see 1800 or higher on that because it realizes that, hey, we've got some headroom here, let's go farther. So you can actually get higher than, than advertised boost speeds, but AMD will go up to its boost clock and stay there. It won't actually push itself any farther. So that's why I say 80% of what you're gonna see here actually applies to AMD, because we're not gonna be getting better than boost clock performance on AMD, but on video you can see a benefit to that extra headroom available to it with what we're gonna do today. Now both AMD and Nvidia use two key factors to control the clocks in their graphics cards. And those being both temperature target, which says don't let the graphics card exceed a certain temperature that we consider safe. And the other being power limit or how much power this graphics card is allowed to draw at maximum. Now either of those two things can cause the graphics card to slow down if they start to approach that threshold, both temperature and TDP independently. Now the nice thing about AMD and Nvidia is both of them allow us to adjust the temperature target and the power target, giving us more headroom. Now why do we want more headroom even if we're not already hitting those limits? Well, because as the temperature and the TDP start to approach those limits, they will start to slow down. That way it doesn't just suddenly bang its head against the roof of those limits. So it will start to kind of slow down. That way we don't hit that limit really hard and abrupt because if it hits it really hard and it has to suddenly pull back power and frequency to keep from going over, that's gonna be noticed in a very jarring gaming experience of a sudden decrease in FPS. And that would be very, very intrusive to your gaming experience. So that's why things will kind of slowly start to kind of equalize as they get towards those limits. Fortunately, we can adjust those, and that's what we're gonna do here today. And one last thing I wanna explain before we actually get into the demo here is the reason why you would actually want to increase the TDP and the temperature limit if you're not even already hitting those limits is because how the clock adjusts itself is not only dependent on how close it is to the actual limit, but how much farther it can go before it hits that limit. So if it sees there's a bigger gap between where it is and the limit, it won't adjust itself nearly as much because it goes, wow, we've got a long way to go. So if we're at 60 and we can go to 90, it goes, wow, we've got 30, see here before we can have to start messing with ourselves. So we can go a little farther. So let's go ahead and turn here and let's get into some testing uh, and show you guys exactly what kind of tangible differences there are by adjusting just those two things. Transition. Now this is EVGA Precision. I'm using it because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. We're doing this with a 1080 Founders Edition right now. Uh, if you have an AMD graphics card installed, you can do what you're gonna be seeing here with um, global watt manager inside of the Radeon settings 
uh, application. So you would go into games, then go into global, then go into the top tab and go to global watt manager. I don't know if MSI Afterburner works with AM, the new AMD with the RX 480 stuff, um, but you can also use MSI Afterburner on the older AMD graphics cards. So this is what everything looks like by default. And you can see the top two we have right here is power target at 100% and temp target at 83C. This little arrow here points to the prioritization. This says, base your, your dynamic control on either power target or temperature. Now, right now, we're just gonna leave it as is. It's completely defaulted. Um, there's no change whatsoever. And so what we wanna do is kinda get some baseline tests here so that we can see just how much gain we're gonna get. After all, this video is not about necessarily the starting point or the particular graphics card or the cooler type. It's about seeing how much gains you can get by adjusting these different settings right here. So I'm gonna be using Metro Last Light. I'm gonna be running it in 1440p because I wanna put a decent load on the graphics card. We wanna see, you know, we don't want it to be too easy. 1080p is a little bit too easy for this card. Um, 4K is still not really the norm for more, most people. So I'm gonna be doing 1440p. I'm gonna run the test three times and we're gonna, because that's plenty of time to let the graphics card get hot. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about the results, see what kind of drop off there is because of temperature limits and power targets, adjust those settings and then see how much tangible gain there really was. This Metro Last Light benchmark is extremely violent. I don't condone this level of behavior. Although fun and, and semi-glorious, it's very violent. Wow, well, who the hell am I kidding? I approve. All right, so here's the test right here. And when this is all said and done, I'll put up graphs. That way you guys can e e more easily see kind of the tangible differences here. So our first run, remember we did three runs in 1440p, 99.0 frames per second average. And then we came down to a 97.9 .9 frames per second average. So one FPS drop, and then a 97.8 FPS average. Again, a one, uh, like a 0.2 FPS drop. So our average across all three was 98. So we wanna see if we can get this number right here, the average across all three up. Now let's take a look at what was actually happening here on the chart. I know that this is gonna be like impossible for you guys to see, but I'm just gonna have to kind of relate it to you. We started off at 1898 megahertz. But well, we came all the way down to 1607, which is actually the base clock for this graphics card. Because we hit 83C, which is the maximum that's allowed. I know you guys can't read, I apologize. It's right here, 83C. Even though we hit the maximum temperature that was allowed, uh, we also hit the maximum TDP. So because of those two things, the graphics card at this point was pretty much reducing its clocks because we reached the max of both TDP and temperature which is kind of the official definition of thermal throttling. So yeah, we lost all of the benefits of GPU boost. So in long gaming sessions, uh, playing games you know, for an hour or two, obviously it's gonna put more of a load on this graphics card over time than just these three, bench, these three tests back to back, which takes about 10 minutes to complete. Um, yeah, so obviously we wanna see if there's any sort of benefit here. So there was those tests right there. I'm gonna clear this history and here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna come back over here to our precision, or in your case, Global Watt Manager, if you're using AMD. We are going to prioritize temperature. We are gonna keep the power target and the temperature target uh, linked. And we're going to put the power target as high as it would go. And all of your graphics cards are gonna be slightly different. The 1080 happens to have a default of 120, and we're gonna leave it at 92C for our prioritization on temperature. So we're telling it, don't start to really do anything until we go get up to 92C. Uh, and then we're gonna leave again the GPU clock offset at zero, memory offset at zero. We're not doing any sort of overclocking here. But what we also wanna do is we wanna keep the temperatures under control. And at the sacrifice of a little bit of noise, we are gonna come over here and take a look at the fan curve. Because the factory fan curve is actually very, very, very conservative on the NVIDIA side. They don't let the GPU go any faster than 50% uh, fan speed, which if you're willing to let the card get a little bit noisier, then you can actually get much better thermal. So I'm not even gonna make a custom fan curve. I'm just gonna select the aggressive curve here from the dropdown. There's a dropdown here. If you click on, uh, we'll do this again here. I did it kind of quickly. If you click the curve button inside of Precision X, you can go to the fan tab, come down here, click aggressive, click okay. 
it's now applied, apply it. You can see the fan speed jumped up already. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do those three tests again, and we're gonna see if that average 98 FPS came up or not. Now, obviously with the aggressive fan curve, it's kind of noisy as you'll probably hear on the mic. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind too is the blower style coolers on AMD and Nvidia are very, very noisy. So if you're running some sort of a custom cooler card, like ACX or something, then it's not gonna be nearly as loud. But the reason why I came on here right now is I wanna point out that we are running at 1,823 megahertz, pretty much constant right now, with the temperature sitting right around 72, 73C. It's sitting right around that range. So as long as things stay constant, then the frequency won't bounce around nearly as much either, which is gonna give you a higher FPS average and a better gaming experience. So anyway, I'm gonna let the benchmark continue here and then we'll see what happened. All right, so the three tests are done. Now this is the original test we did, our baseline. If you guys wanna talk about tangible improvements, Remember, we had a 99.08, a 97.90, and then a 97.85. If you look here for a 98 average. Now, if we look at all we did, all we did, if we look here again, is we changed power target to the max and temp target to the max and a more aggressive fan curve to keep the temperatures under control because we don't want to hit 92C, that's terrible. So if we look at the differences here, we now have an average of 104.68, 104.34, and 104.45. See, there, see, there was no change whatsoever for an average of 104.33. So when I say no change whatsoever, I mean between these three tests, you didn't see a steady decrease in speeds because as it was getting hotter, it was slowing down. So we actually gained, what, what is that? 6.3 FPS on the average, just by changing temperature limit, power limit, and the fan curve, we didn't overclock. We didn't add any extra core, but we gained extra performance. That's pretty damn awesome if you ask me. So here's how, the, here's how it worked out in chart form. So you can kind of see the temperature differences there, the power limit average differences, and then the actual FPS differences. Now, I think something I get asked quite often is, well, what if I have a custom card like this with multiple fans, a big heat sink, and it doesn't get anywhere near 83C? It only sits around 75 or 74 out of the box. Well, here's the nice thing about these custom cards. Almost all of them have an increased power limit. Um, some of them will go as high as 130%. And because of that, that means there's gonna be more voltage available to it, and that means there's gonna be more overclocking headroom available to it. So even though you still might not touch the actual core clocks on those cards, any additional headroom that you actually give to those perimeters are going to allow, again, for a higher boost clock, an automatic boost clock, and it's going to keep them from dynamically adjusting the frequency nearly as much, as I said, by keeping a huge margin of distance between current temperature and maximum. The more distance you can get between those two numbers, the better and more consistent your clocks are going to be with GPU boost. And on the AMD side, you're not gonna see nearly as much fluctuation. It'll actually go to the boost clock and just stay there. It won't change whatsoever. Um, but yeah, you definitely wanna take advantage of the additional cooling on these cards. Cause again, these custom cards still come with a pretty conservative fan curve and you can actually get much better cooling out of these guys and still not be anywhere near as loud as you know the 747 on the test bench behind me. And you're still gonna benefit just as much you'll see better and faster boost clocks than you would with something like that. Now, the reason why you want to increase the power target as well is because, believe it or not, even though you keep the temperatures in check, you might still see the same erratic frequency behavior because of the power limit. Now, if you up the limit past 100, it means you're telling the graphics card and the BIOS it's okay to pull more power draw than the rated 180 watts. And you're not gonna hurt anything by that, NVIDIA actually sets that at a limit that's considered safe as long as you have adequate cooling. So if you're gonna increase the power target, you have to increase the fan curve with it because it's gonna give a little more voltage, which is gonna give you more of the automatic overclocking headroom that GPU Boost is gonna take advantage of. So if you were to increase the temperature limit to the 92C and increase the fan curve, you would see lower temperatures, but not necessarily better clocks because it won't be able to go any farther 
with the amount of voltage and the amount of power limit that's available to it. So that's why you kind of want to do all three of those things in conjunction with each other and have them work very harmoniously as like a triangular uh, trinity of amazing GPU voodoo magic. So yeah, power target, temperature target, and fan curve have to work together. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Share it with someone you think that it will help. The cool thing is, like I said, this isn't brand specific. It's not graphics card specific. It applies to all graphics cards, new and old. So give it a shot, guys. Download your favorite tweaking software. They're all pretty much free and uh, start playing around and see what kind of results you get. If you get some good results, put them down in the comments. Let everyone else see how amazing your overclocks are and achieve that baller status. But with that said, it's time to go, guys. Thanks for watching. Have some fun. Go out there and make someone's day a little bit better. And with that said, time to go. I'll see you in the next one.